metal fume fever, also known as brass founders ague, brass shakes, zinc shakes, galvi flu, metal dust fever, or Monday morning fever, is an illness primarily caused by exposure to certain fumes. Workers breathe in fumes from chemicals such as zinc oxide or magnesium oxide, which are themselves created by heating or welding certain metals, particularly galvanized steel. Other common sources are fuming silver, gold, or platinum metals. Chromium is also a hazard, from stainless steel. Cadmium, present in some older silver soldier alloys can, in extreme cases, cause loss of consciousness within a matter of minutes. Welders are commonly exposed to the substances that cause metal fume fever. Signs and Symptoms The signs and symptoms are nonspecific but are generally flu-like including fever, chills, nausea, headache, fatigue, muscle aches, joint pains, lack of appetite, shortness of breath, pneumonia, chest pain, blood pressure change, and cough. A sweet or metallic taste in the mouth may also be reported along with a dry or irritated throat which may lead to hoarseness. Symptoms of a more severe metal toxicity may also include a burning sensation in the body, shock, no urine output, collapse, convulsions, shortness of breath, yellow eyes or yellow skin, rash, vomiting, watery or bloody diarrhea or low or high blood pressure, which require prompt medical attention. Flu-like symptoms will normally disappear within 24 to 48 hours. It often takes one to three weeks to fully recover. Cause, metal fume fever is due to the inhalation of certain metals either as fine dust or most commonly as fumes. Simple compounds of the metals, such as their oxides, are equally capable of causing it. The effects of particularly toxic compounds, such as nickel carbonyl, are not considered as a mere metal fume fever. Exposure usually arises through hot metal working processes, such as smelting and casting of zinc alloys. Or welding of galvanized metals. If the metal concerned is particularly high risk, then cold sanding processes may also cause it, even though the dose is lower. This may also occur with electroplated surfaces or metal rich anti corrosion paint, such as cadmium passivated steel or zinc chromate primer on aluminium aircraft parts. Exposure has also been reported in use of lead free ammunition by the harder steel core stripping excess metal from the jacket of the bullet and barrel of the rifle. The most plausible reason for the symptoms involves a dose-dependent release of certain cytokines, an event which occurs by inhaling metal oxide fumes which injure the lung cells. This is not an allergic reaction though allergic reactions to metal fumes can occur. Diagnosis Diagnosis primarily depends upon a good occupational history. Diagnosis of metal fume fever can be easily missed, as the complaints are nonspecific, resemble a number of other common illnesses, and presentation occurs typically one a year or four days after the exposure. When respiratory symptoms are prominent, metal fume fever may be confused with acute bronchitis or pneumonia. The diagnosis is based primarily upon a history of exposure to metal oxide fumes. Kane and Fletcher report a case of metal fume fever that was diagnosed only by taking a full occupational history and by close collaboration between primary and secondary healthcare personnel. Physical examination findings vary among persons exposed, depending largely upon the stage in the course of the syndrome during which examination occurs. Patients may present with wheezing or crackles in the lungs. They typically have an increased white blood cell count, and urine. Blood plasma and skin zinc levels may be elevated. Chest X ray findings may also be present. An interesting feature of metal fume fever involves rapid adaptation to the development of the syndrome following repeated metal oxide exposure. Workers with a history of recurrent metal fume fever often develop a tolerance to the fumes. This tolerance, however, is transient and only persists through the work week. After a weekend hiatus, the tolerance has usually disappeared. This phenomenon of tolerance is what led to the name Monday fever. In 2006, there were approximately 700 metal fume exposures reported to the United States Poison Control Center. The American Welding Society estimated that 2,500 employees in the steel industry develop metal fume fever in the U.S. each year since the majority of the cases are not reported. Treatment 
Treatment of mild metal fume fever consists of bed rest, keeping hydration levels high, and symptomatic therapy as indicated. In the case of non-allergic acute lung injury in the setting of metal fume fever, a standard or even recommended approach to treatment has not been studied. A traditional remedy is to consume large quantities of cow's milk either before or immediately after exposure. However, this advice is challenged by the United Kingdom Health and Safety Executive, who write only a Euro unregistered trademark T believe the stories about drinking milk before welding. It does not prevent you getting metal fume fever. Prevention Prevention of metal fume fever in workers who are at potential risk involves avoidance of direct contact with potentially toxic fumes, improved engineering controls, personal protective equipment, and education of workers regarding the features of the syndrome itself and proactive measures which can be taken to prevent its development. Particularly for cadmium, the design of the product may be changed so as to eliminate it. NICD rechargeable batteries are being replaced by NIMH. Cadmium plating is replaced with zinc or nickel. Silver soldier alloys now rarely contain it. See also, occupational asthma. References. External links, inhalation fever, HTTP, files as org facts fact 25 PDF, inorganic dust pneumonias.